What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayes, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So happy Memorial Day, my friends. Thank you to all of those of you who have family members who have sacrificed to give us the freedom that we enjoy here in this great country, the United States of America. Because of that freedom, today is a day when lawn care nuts everywhere get to get out and throw her down. Now, I've recently just gotten back in town from North Carolina, went to see my parents, just got back yesterday, Sunday, and now I'm here on Monday, and I am severely overgrown. Right here, this is the Carbon X strip. Can you see how thick and tall this is? Now this has been, uh, well, seven days since a mow. I have been mowing twice a week, but because I went out of town last week, Wednesday, I didn't get to mow this midweek. So it's definitely overgrown, but you can definitely see the difference in where you're sitting there in the camera. The uh, That hasn't had fertilizer since, oh, uh, it's been a few months anyway. And you can see it's not really growing at all, but over here, it's just thick and lush and green. And you know, that's what nitrogen does for you. Of course, the Carbon X is a great fertilizer, but just so you guys know, nitrogen drives the bus. Nitrogen is the conductor. Nitrogen makes the grass grow thick and healthy. It's just how it is. And you can see it here from this beautiful thick patch that I'm laying in here. This is Palmetto St. Augustine grass, by the way. It's beautiful. Pretty soft too, actually. I think we broke the one-third rule here, Jenny. We're gonna have to do a double cut through the middle here. Up over by there. How you doing? Hi. Now this is my Empire Zoysia Grace, and uh, it's it's overgrown too, not quite as bad. It's not as fast of a grower as St. Augustine is. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of seed heads coming up through here. And these are not zoysia grass seed heads. These are actually Bermuda seed heads making themselves known. And uh, I've been keeping everything hidden. You haven't really been able to see it. The zoysia has been choking it out with the frequent mowing. But since I let this go for seven days, you can see the Bermudas revealing itself. And it's in here quite a bit. But you know, you'll see once I cut it, it doesn't show itself. The zoysia is able to keep it at bay so we're gonna see how that goes for a while uh, I'd like to do it without chemicals so we'll see but we're gonna give this a nice cut and the other thing we're gonna do then is it gives me an excuse to break out an old piece of equipment that I used to use gosh I think it's been eight seven or eight years ago now and I haven't used it in that long so let's check this out by the way I don't know if you can see that this is a zoysia seed head right here so that's the kind of seed head you want to see when you have zoysia grass right that's healthy if it goes to seed it doesn't doesn't hurt it or anything and that's the wild Bermuda seed head. So you can definitely see the difference in those two. I'll do some still photos for you too. But again, zoysia seed head, good to see that in your zoysia lawn. That is wild Bermuda seed head, not good to see in your zoysia lawn. I will say though, it's nice and soft to lay in. This is my original DIY lawn striper. Yeah, I've saved it all these years. And uh, still got the same rocks in it from Northwest Indiana. I got Northwest Indiana rocks filling this inside of this thing right here. But uh, actually there's a gash on it from where I hit it with the mower blade. I don't know if you can see that. Way back in the day. And that's why I stopped using this is because when you use this homemade lawn striper, link in the description below to that fun video from many years ago, you can't back up. So, uh, but we're gonna use it for old time's sake. There are much better alternatives now. There's the big league striper, I think is pretty good. Looks pretty good, but um, this is still fun to try and mess with. And uh, because it's old, I know some of you guys will appreciate it. So here we go. I'm gonna put on the DIY lawn striper and I'm gonna try to stripe the Empire Zoysia over back over by there. You see that domination line over there though? I know you see it. I know you do.
we'll get back to the red hot striping action in just a minute, but I'm noticing something with the Honda. It's the first time I've ever actually cut the Zoysia when it was pretty thick or super thick like this. And I don't know if the striper's doing this or if this is a thing with the Honda. So let's check this out. Look at this clumping. Look at that. And we're, we're in full mulch mode here, right there. But it could be the striper hooked on there. Look at this, look. Look at that. Look it. So I'm gonna have to take that striper off and see what it's doing. Don't judge the stripes yet because the sun isn't perfect, but the grass looks good though. So let's take that striper off of there real quick and just see what's going on here. So no, it's not the striper. I you guys will have to tell me, does your Honda not do real well mulching when the lawn is thick and the grass is thick? I mean, I don't consider this too thick, especially when I, you know, compare it to this. I mean, this is what I would call thick and overgrown, and this is going to cause a problem for any mower because I'm an abusive lawn owner, allowing that to even happen. But don't get me wrong. I mean, maybe all little mowers would do it. I'm going to put the Toro Super Recycler on in a second just to make sure, but and I, and I don't mind doing a double cut either, so... You can see the grass laying up there. See it all? Where it's being deposited unevenly. And again, if it's, if I haven't ever mowed with this mower super thick, so I don't, you can tell I really like this mower a lot, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna poop on it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna take the super recycler over here. By the way, I wanted to point out, you'll remember this dry spot from a few weeks ago. I had watered it and came back and everything was doing fine. Now I've been out of town, we got up into the 90s. You can see the rest of the lawn is nice and green. I know, weeds around there, I know. But uh, this area dried out once again because I wasn't here to baby it. So there's something going on underneath here for sure. Uh, I just need to dig down there and find out what it is. Either way, let's test the super recycler first on the mulching. So, I don't know if it's a fair assessment or not. I did some up there and I did some down here. But I only had a small area left to do with the super. And so I don't know if it's a fair comparison. This area down here is a little smoother, or a little thinner, I mean. That right there is the thickest part of the lawn. We're gonna have to do another comparison because the super definitely appears to have done a much better job. But, and I did my best to get the cutting heights about the same. But again, I don't, man, you can tell I really don't want to crap on this Honda. And, and, I, and I'm not going to. We're going to do some more tests on it. But the Super Duo in this area left no clippings at all. But the Honda left a lot. So I went and brought the Super up here. Where it is as thick, but the runs are not as long. Which matters when you're mulching because it's got to empty out. But I did a section in here and this is also not leaving any clippings. The Super's not. So this was the Super in here. So... I want to make sure I do a fair test though, side by side, and we'll do some more. I got plenty of thick St. Augustine on the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and stop screwing around here because I got a lot to do today. So I'm going to get this mowed up, double cut, get some stripes on it, and then move on. But I figured you guys would just like to see some of the observations I make as I'm going along my day here. Well, I don't know if we're ever going to get to the throwdown part today. Having too much fun with the cutting, and that's what happens when you let things go and you go on vacation. But I just finished doing a really crappy weed whack edge job on this, but I figured I needed to show you this because I put down the 1801 Green Punch a week ago. I wanted to see, let you see how nice and beautiful she's looking. There you go. I think our domination line is back in effect on both sides now. This here has been uh, two weeks without a cut. 
something I put up last week. I was talking about the Provista. Just so you guys know, Provista is just a different variety of St. Augustine grass. Most of the grass here in Florida is St. Augustine grass. You have different varieties. You have Flora Tam, you have Bitter Blue, you have Palmetto. This is called Scott's Provista, and they're very much on their branding, so they insist that the name Scott's be in there all the time, but it's just another variety of St. Augustine grass, and this particular one has been bred a little bit differently. It's been bred with some kind of traits that you might want to have, and one of those is slower growth. So in two weeks, though, after the green punch, <laughs> the green punch definitely punched it, and it grew pretty nice. So we're going to keep testing this, and you can see I have a little Bermuda in here. I did spray this. I'll link in the description below to an update video I did, but uh, I am going to have to do another weed control just to make sure I keep it clean here for the summer. But there you go. She's looking pretty good. I've been cutting this at three and a half inches, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with that now. for trying to fill up while I'm filming. All right, since this is so overgrown and even the part that's unfertilized is overgrown, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this on the top setting and pretend that it's like my Floratam over there. So we're gonna go at four, four and a quarter inches here. And just so you can see, the Floratam is way overgrown too. And it was actually just mowed Wednesday. So here's Floratam growth. I mowed it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today's Monday and this is late morning. So four and a half days of growth. Look at this, gigantic just grows and grows hey sharpen your mower blade hain sharpen your mower blade hain sharpen your mower blade hain By the way, I just want to show y'all, I hope the uh, audio will be okay on here. I should not be cutting right now. It's noon, high noon, and the grass is heat stressed. See this right here? That's heat stressed St. Augustine grass. See how the blades are curled over there? And so what will happen is now when I cut these because they're heat stressed, they're going to fray. And I'm going to hear more people next week saying, sharpen your mower blade, Hane. Sharpen your mower blade, Hane. So y'all should never cut when it's warm. I don't have a choice. I've been out here screwing around and playing around with these cameras all day and I haven't got my work done so I gotta cut when it's stressed. You look at that, it's so thick in there, it's so thin over there. Okay, well, I'm actually still mowing. This thing was much more overgrown than I imagined, so I'm enjoying it, but now we're at the heat of the day. Actually, it's got a little cloud cover. It feels really nice, but I've actually mowed all this here. And then I still have to mow the Floratam over there, but we're getting into the heat of the day here. Into the very peak heat of the day, and I really, it's, it's struggling, and I, you know, I haven't watered it enough since I've been gone. And so I need to go ahead and not mow it in the heat of the day here. But what I do need to do is throw down my grub application over here. 
some of you purchased the guide recently and you were sent a free kind of you know starter guide or whatever and any of you who had already purchased the e-guides you got it in your email too i did like a starter guide that shows you how to put down an application for your first time and it was actually a grub control because i figured that's a really good one to start with in the summer it's easy to do there's a it's foolproof for the most part you're not going to burn anything and applying a grub application is a good idea so i figured that would be a good thing so if you've bought the book or you're going to buy the book you're going to get that free supplement guide along with it which you know helps you throw down your first application step by step by step all written instructions i even hand drawing it out so that's there for you. Now in the guide to talk about two products, Scott's Grub X, which has an active ingredient of like chloranthropole or something, I think it's called. And then the other one is imidacloprid. And actually here in Florida, at least in my area, I can't find this Scott's Grub X. I can only find products with the imidacloprid in it. And I think that's because imidacloprid, in addition to being good at preventing grub worm damage in your lawn, and by the way, not grub worms, they're grubs. I just use grub worm because it's a keyword people search. But either way, I think the reason they offer that here in addition to that is because it also will help with mole crickets, which are a problem we have in coastal areas here. And I, I think even up into South Carolina and over in Louisiana and Mississippi, they do. As well as also, it does get some suppression for chinch bug, which is a big deal here in Florida. So that's the only reason I can figure why I can only get imidacloprid here. But either way, in the extra guide, there's both options for you and I'm sure you'll be able to find one or the other. Now I just want to say there is some debris and junk up here on the top. That's some stuff that I trimmed out. That's actually wild Bermuda that came in but I trimmed my edges here and yeah I know I need to I need to take care of this whole thing now but either way I'm gonna leave this debris up here because I need to cut again after this because I promised to show you guys some stripes but first I'm gonna put the grub out down and then I'm gonna cut again and I just figured that'll just help everything settle in better you know. Either way people always ask do I need to cut before or after my grub application and the answer is doesn't really matter. What matters most is that you get your grub application watered in. Again, any of you that have the e-guide, you should have got the written instructions. So those were sent to you in a link, but it's really simple here. I have the Scott's Edge Guard. Right there, Scott's Edge Guard Deluxe. I think I paid like $40 for that over by the Home Depot over by there. Not the best spreader in the world, but it gets the job done and I use it because most of you do. So that way I can really, you know, apply these products in the same manner that you guys do. So here we go. We got it right there. Scott's Edge Guard. 2.5 pound rate is the setting we want and so therefore that is a setting of five pretty easy now the next thing you always want to do is just check your opening so you see it there does it look like it's opening enough for the prills to fall through well let's take a look and the reason you want to check this is because not all these spreaders are the same i mean they are the same but because it's you know not it's just plastic and stuff this can all get knocked around and thrown off and this spring can stretch out differently so you have to use a little bit of common sense with it as well so there you go there's what the product looks like so what you do is you just put a little next to that and then just open it up does it look like it'll fall through there and the answer is yes that's going to fall through there real nice so I feel pretty good about that. Now in the event that these prills were too big for that, then that's what I'm saying. You're gonna use a little common sense and you're gonna open her up just a little bit more. But definitely these little grape nut looking things right here, these will go through that opening just fine. So we're good to go. Now the next thing I said is, and again, this is 2,500 square feet. I'll show you the easy way. This bag covers 5,000 square feet, so I'm gonna dump half of it in here, and I'm gonna spread my pattern and hope for the best. It's just that easy. And yes, you can eyeball half the bag, I trust you. Feel the weight before and feel the weight after. I bet you'll be pretty close. Half the bag covers 2,500 square feet. This area is 2,500 square feet. The first thing you're gonna see me do is a trim pass. I'm not gonna use the edge guard. I'm gonna go somewhere logically in here and I'm gonna throw it right back to the edges. And yes, some is gonna go out there, but I'm gonna use my leaf blower to blow that back in. I'm gonna go trim pass down here, trim pass over there, trim pass at the far edge, and then trim pass right along back here. That's the first step, here we go. take a look yeah that looks actually pretty good because I got a whole strip and the other thing I was doing is while I was doing this I was looking at each side how far is it going you know and it's you can see my wheel tracks right there at least I think you can you can see my wheel tracks right there at least I can see them here and I was boom right over there so that means the other side of the pass is right over here it's about two and a half feet so my next pass then I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna throw back two and a half feet to those wheel tracks right over there And 
so there you go. Now I'm gonna keep moving this way, two and a half feet each time. Remember the dry spot I talked about earlier? I'm gonna keep moving, keep moving, keep moving until I hit that corner and I'm all done. There we go, just a little bit left over. If you want, you can go ahead and spread this out on the rest of the lawn. If you know an area that you didn't hit heavy enough or you think you might have slided on your pass, it's no problem going back and applying this little bit. Or you can just call it good, that's pretty close. That's about an eighth of a pound there is all that is. But I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and throw the rest out, you'll see. Just throw it out anywhere. Wherever it feels like you might need a little bit more, you're good. For me, I feel like I may have sl slided around this tree. I, didn't, I don't think I did real well out there because of that obstacle, so I'm gonna apply a little bit more in the middle there. And there you go, that's it, 2,500 square feet, couple two tree minutes, grub application done. Now the most important thing is we gotta get her watered in. People will often ask me, Alan, if you water during the day, is your lawn gonna burn? And the answer is no. We get thunderstorms here every day in Florida in the hottest part of the summer, and you never hear about mass lawn burnings. So go ahead and get that grub application watered in. I don't care what anybody tells you, you're not gonna burn the lawn, but it needs to get into the soil where it's gonna work. It will not work if it's not in the soil and it takes water to get it there. Hey, well, I appreciate you guys hanging around this long. Now listen, everything you've seen in this video today was filmed today. It was filmed this morning into this afternoon, and then I've been editing all into the later afternoon. Now it's like 5.30, sun's going down, and I, I just, I wanted to make sure you guys knew I wasn't gonna disappoint. What is the main thing we do on Memorial Day? What are we doing this day? We throw down Malarganite. Now that'll give us a good chance to see how we're gonna even out this blue streak here or this dark streak from the original Hook'em Horns app that I did. And really the way that you do that, if you ever stripe your lawn or you ever have an area that's a little bit too fast, or if you ever have an area that you over fertilize compared to another, what you wanna do is just over fertilize the rest of the lawn. In other words, you just wanna throw more at it. If you put down, you know, 0.75 pounds of nitrogen per thousand and you striped it, then you go back over at the opposite, opposite way and you put down one pound of nitrogen per thousand. But it's good to wait at least a week or two in between there. That's kinda how you do it. You basically just apply more than the original app and it just should even everything out. Now this is a different nitrogen source here, so we're gonna see how it goes. But again, it's tradition to get your malarganite down on Memorial Day and that's what I'm gonna do right now here at the end of the day while I'm having this beautiful cigar here. This is an Opus X from my friend Peter over at Bot Cigars. Thanks, Pete. Also, as far as the stripes go over there, I'm not gonna be able to get to that today, but don't worry. I showed you the homemade lawn stripe or whatever, whatever. We'll get to that a little bit later, so. Also, I went ahead and watered this earlier in the day, and you can see it's already improved a little bit. So I'll put a little bit more water on it, we'll see. Should improve by tomorrow, actually. So this area here and around over here, this is 2,500 square feet, so we're gonna go full bag rate. 0.75 pounds of in and again you can't even see the hook'em horns in there now because it's just all faded out from a terrible mowing in the heat I, I pretty much jacked the grass up real bad by mowing it today but sometimes you got to do what you got to do even the uh, floor cam over there is suffering I had wanted to wait but ugh, so much for domination all day anyway you got to keep with tradition here and get this down confirm that if you want to put down bag rate on 2,500 square feet of Milo setting number 10 is where you want to be on the Scott's turf builder edge guard deluxe Hey. hey, so that's going to do it for the 2019 Memorial Day Throwdown Special here on the Lawn Care Nut channel. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and do my final... Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and do my final circle dance here, and I'll see you in the lawn.